Hey guys, this is Odd1 Gaming. This is going to be another Dragonair Silent Gods video. In today's video, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the best DPS heroes that you can use for Temporal Vortex and the Continental Challenges. And I'm specifically going to talk about the epics today that have the highest damage potential from, you know, from my opinion, from what I've personally tested, from what I've heard from the community and from what it says on our tier list. If you do not know about the tier list, just check in the description or in the pinned comment. There's going to be a link to, to the tier list that me, Sky and uh, Scratch have been working on. And we always try to constantly improve it, constantly change it and constantly adapt it. Because you know what? There's tons of heroes that we, st you know, that it's, uh, it's hard to play with every single one of them. Uh, to the perfection level so we always try to keep it updated as much as we can but like i mentioned i really want to talk about the single target ones today because we have at least if you started on day one we have these continental challenges okay and there are six affinities of these or elements sorry there's six elements so usually you're gonna have to bring either poison fire lightning radiance uh necrosis or frost so i kind of tried to bring at least one option from every single one of those to this list so let's just jump into it and let's have a look in the gallery and let's start going through them so from my point of view the strongest one of these you know the first one i'm just gonna say this this is the one that i believe to be the strongest and then after that you know there's gonna be it's it's they're not gonna be in a particular order but number one is going to be tunnel on from my point of view let me move myself to the right side so the reason why he's so amazing is because he straight up starts off with 18% crit rate, okay, which is gonna make him to is gonna make it easier for you to build him with crit rate to get at 100%. But after that, on the passive, the hero gains an extra 20% crit rate. So he straight up starts with 38% crit rate. That's massive. That leaves you, you know, just another what's that 70? My math's not gonna be good. 62 percent crit rate just to get from other stuff so it should be pretty easy to get him to a hundred percent or close to hundred percent crit rate then after that he has a pretty good uh, uh battle skill that he deals 90 percent attack three times but he also will have a chance to proc the wild and then do more damage that's the thing for each of these ones that i'm going to speak of <clears throat> i'm gonna i'm gonna try and say it as if you have at least one person of that pairing with him so for example let's say you have tunnel on you would obviously use somebody like an average which everybody gets so by doing that he's going to be able to proc even this passive like more and more and he's going to get to those 20 stacks pretty fast and he's going to get a ton more crit damage so <clears throat> apart from this battle skill it also has the higher the number uh difference between the buffs on the hero and the target the higher the damage so obviously you might have some buffs on him that means you're going to do more damage and then on the ultimate, this one hits pretty hard and it also gives himself attack up before he does that. That's massive. And then he hits five times. So definitely Tunnel Nun is one of those that's so amazing that he's definitely a legendary level. I'm not going to lie. You could easily say that he's the legendary. Now let's move over to the next one. And the next one is another one of my, honestly, it's one of my personal favorites. And that is Shalter. He's another person that you might look at his kit and you might think like, yeah, I don't really see it. Well, the thing is, it's not about the passive when it comes to his single target damage, because this one just can do, you know, a lightning, a chain lightning that's going to bounce between four targets. But the battle skill puts a lightning shield on somebody that's going to give them attack up. And also that one's going to do damage every 0 0.8 seconds. OK, so some decent damage from this one most of it is going to be derivative damage though keep in mind all of this damage is going to be derivative damage so you're going to build him with enlightenment and attack and uh if you want to know exactly how to best build your dps heroes i have a video that i made on that one it's called like how to how to uh boost your dps's damage i'm going to pin it at the end it's going to be either over here or on that side so you just you can go and check that one out but what's so amazing about shelter is this ultimate so it has a 20 second recharge time but it goes on for 15 seconds okay enhances all uh, all allies with lightning force granting them blessing of thunder what this one does is when launching battle <clears throat> when launching basic attacks all allies with blessing of thunder have a 30 uh, you know, you can scroll up to 35% chance of summoning a lightning strike on the enemy, dealing 95% attack derivative lightning damage. If they are Dauntless, that's double. So that's 70% chance. So if you pair them with like one or two more Dauntless people, or you know what, even with people that have 
uh, fast attack intervals, you're going to see some crazy numbers. He's in my Vortex team and he's almost on par with Ivelios, which is a legendary. So definitely keep in mind on Shelter, he's an amazing epic that everybody should build honestly for their Lightning team. <clears throat> now, if we're on the Lightning side, I want to talk about somebody else that I picked from the Horn, and that's going to be Nimbus. Nimbus is a pretty crazy one, especially when it comes to like the fast attacking, okay? He has a 157 attacks uh, interval, so that's already pretty fast. But then on the, on the passive, he gains attack speed up to every time he receives a buff, so that's, you know... It's, it's just crazy. Then on the battle skill, he deals one attack that only, you know, it's only 220%, but it gains more damage the more attack speed you have. And then what's amazing about him is this ultimate. So he locks onto an enemy for two seconds, during which the, he's going to launch a missile every 0 0.5 seconds, okay? And each of them is going to do 100% lightning damage. Well, think about it like this. The next part. The lock-on duration is affected by the hero's attack speed. Each 1% of extra attack speed increases the duration by 0.02% seconds. 0. Uh, no percent. 0 0.02 seconds up to 6 seconds. This attack is considered the basic attack. So again, because that's how Dauntless people work, he's going to do a ton of attacks. He's going to do a ton of damage. And if you pair him with somebody, like I said, like a shelter, he's going to boost everybody else's damage a ton so not only will he do good damage himself but he's gonna boost any other you know any other uh, person that ha has dauntless and has a quirky kit around basic attacks by a lot so nimbus definitely one of the ones that i really like again he's in my current vortex team <clears throat> now let's move over to somebody that's from the poison one and that's going to be horus okay so the reason why I like Horus is because, first of all, the passive. When the hero deals damage to an enemy under poison, every stack of poison on the target increases 1% uh, crit rate of this damage. So basically, you're going to have always like, I don't know, maybe 5, 10, po uh, 10 poison. So you gain an extra 5 to 10% extra crit rate from the start. But then on the battle skill, he hurls the bomb to an area. So this one's it's a funny thing because Horus is good for AoE, but he's also good for single damage because he has a 75% chance of inflicting three stacks of poison, but they go on for 15 seconds because this one's on a 10 second recharge time. If you have some skill haste, he's going to come back to it uh, a lot. And the poisons themselves are going to be doing damage. They also scale from enlightenment even though it doesn't stay anywhere else from all the testing that i've done and i've seen poison damage also skills from enlightenment so you might not build him with a lot of crit rate but you might just give him some crit rate but mostly go attack and enlightenment but here's the best part about his kit the ultimate so he deals 600 percent poison damage to that area but when hitting enemies under poison triggers poison explosion which means he's going to activate every single one of those poisons to do instant damage so if you pair him with one or two poison uh, heroes as well he's going to do some solid damage out there so horus definitely worth on the list <clears throat> now the next one let's jump over to uh radiance and let's talk about gituna so She's a really interesting one because, first of all, she brings you cre uh, increased crit damage in all battles by 24%. That's a good start from the beginning. But then on the passive, when the hero gains rally, flashes to the furthest enemy, which, you know, if it's only one single target, it's just going to go to that one person, and deals 200% attack, okay, to them, uh, the skill only takes effect once every five seconds. This damage can be improved, so that's going to help a lot. <clears throat> then on the battle skill for 8 seconds after being cast each basic attack deals an extra 68% attack so basically this one's going to happen on every single attack if you give her some attack interval as well you're going to see some crazy damage plus some skill haste she's almost always going to have this one up because it's 10 second recharge time and then it's uh, it lasts for 8 seconds so that's his massive but it's not only that again her ultimate skill deals 700 percent damage which is again pretty solid on its own to enemies within range so again could be good for some aoe stuff as well but here's the fun part if the hero has rally when casting the skill consumes rally to deal extra 200 percent true damage so that one ignores everything it ignores any protection it ignores any defense damage reduction you name it it ignores everything and does some extra damage again you would have her paired with at least one more person that has the rally and you're gonna see some crazy numbers from her and since we're talking about such a person let's talk about hegio because from my point of view he's on this list as well because first of all on his passive 
He has a 75% chance when scrolled up to, to give a random rally ally rally. So this is going to be good paired with any other person because 75% is a pretty good chance. And after that, if you look at the battle skill, he deals two attacks, each dealing 300% uh, attack damage. So that's 600% attack on a battle skill on the 10 second recharge time, which is massive. But then he, the second attack has a 50, goes to 75% chance to grant himself rally and recharges his ultimate energy, which means he's going to come back to that ultimate more and more often and he's going to do tons of damage because this one does 550% attack radiant damage, but if he has rally, he consumes it and he does 50% more damage. <clears throat> and the reason why this one's so good, like I said, is not because his damage is like, oh my god, so crazy. This one goes to like 700, 800% attack, but he's going to come back to it faster because of his battle skill. So that's why I really like Hedge and he deserves to be on the list. Now, let's jump over to some Frost people and let's talk about Rowena, okay? I put Rowena on the list because of this, the passive, first of all. Ignores the target's, uh, the target's defense by 20% when attacking enemies inflicted with Frost. And you know what? Like I mentioned with the other ones, most of the time, you're going to try and pair people with other Frost heroes, especially if you're going to do the Continental Challenges. Well, you're definitely going to want only Frost in there when it comes to damage. So straight up 20% uh, defense, uh, ignoring defense is massive. But then on the battle skill, she deals 365%, which can be boosted with the scrolls <clears throat> to the enemy with the lowest HP, which is going to be obviously the only target available since it's going to be Vortex or the Continental Challenge. But then he also has 100% of inflicting frost herself. So, you know, if you give her some accuracy, he's going to land that frost as well. And that's going to pair really well with her ultimate because she does 600% attack to enemies within range. Again, kind of like Horus, she's going to be good for AoE, but single target as well. But if there's frost, she deals 840% damage. And that's massive if you think about it, especially with this passive, with ignoring defense, she's going to get to like, I don't know, the equivalent of around 1000% damage. And that's massive. So definitely Rowena is somebody to keep in mind. Now, if you move over to another one, that's going to be Rava. He was not, I don't think he was in the season zero. He was, just came in the season one. But anyway, even if I'm wrong, He's really good because he brings, again, kind of like the same way as Gituna, increases the crit damage of all allies in all battles by 24%. That's obviously going to boost everybody's damage by 24%, so that's good. I mean, not the damage, but just the crit damage. But then on the passive, for each enemy inflicted with Frost on the field, the hero gains an extra 15% attack up. Obviously, against single target, it's just going to be straight up the, the one uh, 15%. Still, it's a 15% boost off on his damage, all the time and that's that's good then on the battle skill fires three orbs at the random enemy dealing 260 percent uh attack this one's if i'm not mistaken it's not the total but each of the orbs deal 260 percent damage and that's a lot also has the chance to inflict frost which goes to up to 100 percent and then on his ultimate again he summons an access that does 50 percent cold damage every 1.5 seconds but then at the end it uh, when it expires, it explodes and it deals 400% more damage. So this one has some crazy damage potential as well. So that's Rava. Now, let's move over back to uh, Fire. This is somebody that I haven't played much with, but from what I've tested and what I've seen other people test, she can do some crazy damage and that's Foley. Again, same principle as Tunnelon. If you have some wild with her, she's going to just become better. Uh, again, she brings kind of like the previous ones. She brings uh, ally crit damage increase by 24% in all battles, which is going to be amazing. Then on the passive, each successful wild check by allies increases the damage of the hero's next basic attack by 60% and makes it wild. So think about it like this. She's going to get 60% more damage straight up on the basic attack, but that one makes it also wild. And what wild means is that damage is going to do 120% more damage so she has some crazy damage potential also on the battle skill for seven seconds she's uh she's basically gonna shoot two orbs at a target which is basically two basic attacks so that's that can be some massive damage from her she can be really insane and then on the ultimate this is the crazy one as well like if everything so far wasn't crazy check the ultimate out deals 420 percent fire damage to the enemy okay it doesn't sound like a lot but Upon a successful wild check, the hero casts this skill again on a random enemy. And obviously, if it's a single target, it's going to be the same target. It can be cast up to three times in a row. So this one can do over a thousand damage. This one can be massive. So Foley definitely deserving to be on this list. 
Now let's move over to, I think it's gonna be, I want an honorable mention Caravan. I play with him a bit, he seems okay, but just not, I don't know, maybe maybe I wasn't, I didn't test him at the right time. He seems like he can do some good damage with some ignoring of defense, decent damage on this one, plus a good passive as well, but I don't know, maybe I need to do some more testing, but you know, he was, he was pretty underwhelming. However, the next one is going to be one that's pretty awesome. She's more of a specialist for like arena and stuff, but Questa can also do some great single target damage. She brings ally attack in, in Grand Gladiator's arena. Like I said, mostly good for arena. Then she also has this, which again, good for arena. So, you know, I'm kind of saying a lot of arena, but trust me, she's going to do some good damage. Every time somebody dies, she uh, gives recovery over time to all allies. So she can bring some sustain. But then the battle skill deals 420% necrotic damage. That's pretty good damage. And it also brings attack penalty too, which is pretty good. But then on the ultimate, she deals 950% attack necrotic damage and steals the ultimate by 30%. So, you know, this one does not work in Temporal Vortex, but if I'm not mistaken, it works on the Continental Challenger. So that means she's going to steal and she's just going to keep coming back to that ultimate over and over again. Plus, she heals herself with this one. So definitely worth to be on the list. Quest has one amazing damage dealer when it comes to the necrosis. <clears throat> I think that's everybody from my list. If I look over here, that's my top 10. However, I want to give two more honorable mentions. First of all, it's going to be Voresh, which, you know, we, we rated him on the tier list 5 everywhere because he's extremely versatile, okay? He's, he's really amazing everywhere because he does full board AoE damage three times with buff prohibition 100%. So most of the content where you want to block buffs, he's going to be amazing. Then on the battle skill, he does three hits again with 50%, uh, 60% scrolled up chance to remove one buff again pretty amazing but then the passive heals the ally with the lowest hp by 70 percent of his attack when dealing damage so this one is just you know this is just crazy this this can basically bring you some really good damage you know not the best not top tier but he brings you also survivability and an amazing kit with all the other debuffs and then the other one that i want to give an honorable mention to even though i don't have him but he's i guess one of my most wanted epics that zarloth kind of the same way as voresh <clears throat> He has an ultimate that can do some crazy damage and it's even AoE. But then at the end, he has a chance to play Sphere on enemies and he also heals all allies, not just one, all allies by 30% uh, in the meantime, like from his attack, each enemy hit by this skill increases the healing by 15%. So if you're talking about some other, uh, you know, some AoE areas, I don't know, Goblin or some other stuff, that heal is going to be even better. But also on the battle skill, he brings good damage with recharge speed penalty down. That's pretty good. And then on the passive, he has more self-sustain because every fourth basic attack heals the ally with the lowest HP by 300% of this attack and also has a 100% chance of everything silence on the enemy for five seconds. <sighs> oh my God. I know sometimes people are like, breathe, man, breathe. I know, I know. I just want to say everything. But last thing about him, he brings, uh, increases the attack of all allies in all battles by 24%. So again, not as good as everybody else when it comes to single target, but definitely deserves a mention. So I guess this is going to be it for my list of the top 10 uh, single target epic DPS that I believe, you know, this is my opinion. Again, kind of like the same way that I said in the previous one. If you think that somebody should be on the list and I, you know, I didn't put them on the list, leave it in the comments below, but tell me who would you take out to bring that person in as the top 10 epic. Also keep in mind though, like I mentioned, I wanted to try and bring at least one from each of the, from each of the elements. That's why like, you know, Questa kind of made the list, even though she deserves it, not necessarily because I needed to add one but yeah anyway this is gonna be it for the video today guys as always if you do enjoy my content don't forget to like this video subscribe to the channel to see when I upload next and I'm gonna see you all in the next one peace love take care everyone bye guys <laughs>